why you was 40k in this, I'm like 30. <laughs> How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. Happy New Year. Hope you've all uh, had a good day and started the new year off well. Today we're going to be giving you uh, part two of the machinery tour which is going to be implements and tally handlers. But um, before we get started it'd be much appreciated if you could hit subscribe and uh, give this video a like. If you've got any questions about the kit that we're running, then um, leave it in the comments. You can also follow us on social media, it should be popping up down below. Let's get into it. So the first piece of kit here is a uh, Downs ball, isn't it? I think it is. We got it last year, didn't we? or like spring last year, didn't we? Because we got, well, we've got another rotor spike, which actually is just, our main one. Yeah, so this is, we got this as a bit of a backup one. Someone was selling it uh, pretty cheap and it's like, well, as a backup. So we've actually got well, two of these. A wider one which you'll see later on. But so yeah. But yeah, this is obviously a bit of um equipment for the spuds. I really like the rotor spikes we have. I think it's a lot better. It better does a good a, job for the spuds, better, better than what power harrow would do. Or a base, yeah. Because like you bet you don't have to change your times like that often. Well it's like once, once at season. the end of the season, yeah, isn't it? Maybe like twice a season, depending on how much, but it's like rotivated times you'd be going through them like nothing just pretty simple <laughs> that's that that's pretty yeah. much specialized just for its job but like say our main one is down actually at the mechanics at the minute yeah getting sorted out but anyway second bit of kit here is i don't know it's a reiki i think so this here is a reiki single bed tiller yeah obviously again this is a rotor spike as well so yeah with hardly any tines in it we don't really use this no, I barely use them. I think some people tend to use them quite a lot. The only time we sort of really use them is to try and beat the ground up more if we think there's wire worm there, because they will destroy the spuds. So just like smashing the ground up, trying to get rid of as many wire worms as possible. The majority of the time, we don't really particularly use them, do we? No, that's why it doesn't really look I think much loved. Got the most use last year, didn't it? Yeah, it did actually. So yeah, that's just. Another spud, spud bit of kit, and then this here is the same, but this is a grimy one. Um, it's got yeah. rotivator blades in the front, which, like we just said, potentially you have to change them more than you do with the rope spike blades. Slightly different bed set up at the back, sort of makes a more square a bed, yeah. which we hadn't done before, but we actually, well, I was using it and. You've done the most of it, haven't you? I they got on quite well with de-stoning afterwards. It's in pretty good condition and... Well, it's well, like the main one now, isn't it? You're gonna, we're gonna use this. What, this one over the other one. Yeah. Then this here, in the back of the shed, yeah. is a single row potato topper. Goes on, well, tends to go on the front of the tractor when we're digging spuds early in the season, if we're digging green top, which is pretty much we do for a short time. period at the start of the season pretty much just flails the foliage off with a it's like a cross out. belt isn't it that comes yeah, along there's a cross belt in the back here and it shoots out of the side here so any not any trash is on what you've just previously dug which does yeah. its job this is one we got from this year as well didn't we yeah i found this one on facebook up in scotland <laughs> <laughs> so, this one's in better condition than our old one Oh yeah, definitely. This one's got some paint been, on it. I think the other one's been in the hedge a few times. <laughs> but it's a bit bent up. <laughs> That's, That's the thing with a lot of this spud equipment. It's just specialised to one job. Yeah. And one job only. What we have here, the final bit of kit in this shed, if I can try to get it all in, is a Basilia triple row potato topper, which we also <laughs> had arrive in the spring due to, well, oh, Apples is a sprayer man, so he can... Uh, well, they burn regular in the chemical which we used to just burn to the like kill off. the spuds off. But now, there is where that chemical you could just spray on the plants. But now, the only chemicals we can actually use to kill the spuds off, we have to, you have to chop, you have to get rid of the tops. So you have to top them all off, get rid of the foliage, and then spray them. We got this because you're going to be well three times as quick with that then you are having the sink doing it with a single row one and then you are driving less times and like you're not driving up and down every row than just like sort of 
damaging the beds a little bit. It was a quick purchase, wasn't it? Because it was yeah, like, oh, they have yeah. actually banned it. When you're in the field and you're topping, it's awesome. Having it the rest of the time, it's not quite perfect. When you turn it on the road, it's not the nicest thing to turn because the wheels it pivots on are right. You've got these little dolly wheels at the back here. So you've got pivot points all the way back, back here. Back so it literally swings a bit like a bus. <laughs> we've had that a couple of times, like Charlie, we can't get it in the gateway, so you've had to, we've had that for handler. It's been a two man job to get it in the field. One person in a tractor, one person in a handler to lift the back end round. But generally, yeah, we it does the job and it's a lot better than going single row. Triple row is obviously going to save a lot more time. We're still learning it. Yeah, this was the first year of using it, so I think we had to play around with it and uh, get the hang of it, year really. it'll be easier to get. It's just a bit of a faff, but it's not the end of the world, is it? <laughs> right, so this is the handler we have at Cow Farm number two. This is the Manitou, so you can see MLA 628, 2003, I think it is. It's quite nice, this one, isn't it? Yeah, um, I like this. is probably my second and... favourite Taliana. Yeah. With it like to the JCB, obviously. It's definitely not looked <laughs> after because we tend to just jump in it, feed the cattle, and then go yeah, again. Yeah. Whereas if it was back at the spub farm, it probably would get a clean. It's a pretty smooth ride, I would say. The hydraulics are nice and responsive. The joystick. The in joystick, it. yeah, the joystick's nice. I wish we put a different one out here and like have the Terex out here and have this one back at the main yard. Yeah. Just as. <laughs> just as nice. Just a inside. basic. <laughs> Uh, sort of Talianla, no fancy joystick, no electric windows, just <laughs> does the job. The second part of this farm tour is going to be back at the main spud farm where we've got most of our machinery or most of the implements um, such as the plough etc. So we'll get back there and carry this on. Alright guys, so it's, we're back at the main spud yard. Alright, so this is our Cavernon CLC Pro, just ripper with Crumbler and Proof, packer on the back. Which is actually proper heavy. <laughs> I think it's the crumbler and the crumbler and the packer on the back that she adds so much weight to it. You definitely know you've got it on the road, don't you? We like using it for the spuds because it has the as the leafs here. So um they just sort of as we have a fair bit of stony ground around here, we find that it works pretty well. Instead of snapping a shear bolt and having to change the shear bolt every five minutes and going through a million of them. They usually just crack along. They just crack on that bracket but it's bit there. Normally but the front three, which yeah. one of them will normally go, because obviously they take the first bit of impact. At Cow Farm number two, where we started this tour, we do actually have three conventional chisel plows there, which, like Ben was saying, are with shear bolts, but we didn't mm. show you them because it got dark. Generally, we get on really well with this. And we use it for ripping the ripping up the fields after we've harvested the spuds which um yeah it leaves it in a nice uh condition. position for the farmer to then go in and do what he wants with it whether Plow, that's leave it, it over yeah. winter or like they said go in and drill it afterwards so right. find us here well I this, is, this is apples is bit of kit this is so yeah we have a five burrow cavernum plow i get on well with it i really like i don't have any problems with it i really really like it probably do with a little bit more grease on the boards definitely don't want to get it rusty as so that's literally the biggest pain ever to sort out it does a, a nice plow. job and it's like by far so like it's big enough for around here we don't have the biggest field so like i don't think you would really want a bigger plow nicer than a four furrow plow because obviously you've got the extra furrow and get a bit more get, get a, a bit, bit more, more done <laughs> This here is our, what is it, it's under 3 metres isn't it? It's like I think 2 it's point like something. 2.7. Yeah, it Come fits on. quite nicely behind the tractor. So this is our Coon Rotivator. Yep. Uh, obviously we use it for just getting rid of any grass fields if we're going in with the spuds. We tend to pop around the headlands and some of the corn fields to tidy them up. Yeah, that's, that's pretty true. much all it does. Obviously, we've had a chemical being banned to stop wireworm. Now we're trying to avoid grot because that's where you get it the most, isn't it? The grass fields. So obviously, now we haven't got that chemical, we sort of got to try and avoid grass fields. Well, it we just... used that chemical this year and it didn't hardly work. So yeah, we it's... used a different one this year, which is meant to do 
the same job but and it didn't do it, anything. So we're probably not even gonna bother with it. Was it ne Nemo Four? In I think we used was called. Cool. We've had it for a long time now, and it's been it's been good. The yeah. next bit of kit. I've already show you one of these. This was this is the second rotor spike that come in part of that deal. This is the big this one, though, isn't it? It's wider, which I think. Well, it's, it's too wide. It's to go on like a little low loader trailer or something. It's over three meters. We long. haven't, we didn't use it this year. It's too wide to get it down, like to get it down any of the lanes. It's huge. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. How <laughs> it pretty much sticks out a fair bit wider than the rotor And on, on with the tour. On to if it's all lined up. It's easy. This is our five meter cousins uh, cultivator which has got pigtail tines on it and then it's got a set of crumbers at the front and the back we've run this over for the spuds most of the time if we can and then obviously we do it for the corn a lot of people around here tend to use them don't they yeah which yeah. we think just down to the sort of soil type it does a good job breaking it down the only problem is it with it is that the legs have actually moved out of their original place so the bit of kit here which come sort of like february time last year wasn't it yeah it was uh this here is our four meter cockling well we got this because last uh last autumn we plowed over a lot of corn ground to be drilled which then didn't get drilled and then got rained on got and got rained and left for winter so then we wanted a bit of kit different to the convert and ripper because we didn't want to properly rip it up we wanted something that would scratch it over has actually been pretty good we obviously used it for that job i think the first ever videos i was doing <laughs> was actually using this ripper if you want to go check them out <laughs> but it's got the uh breaker boards on the front got depth wheels on it the packer which we actually took off the other day i've moved i've used this mainly you've used it a couple times yeah joe Java let me use it a couple of times in the summer when he was up beside the harvester so I got to do a bit of scratching some corn ground over with it which actually it was really good for that wasn't it? I think we're definitely pleased with this thing. Yeah. And are. four meters obviously it's fold out. Um, it's actually a nice size to work with and to be fair it's not actually heavy. No it's not. But then you're not going that deep are you so it's not really working hard on the tractor. The only thing I have with my tractor is that it, like, when you hitch up, it's, it's really close to the back of the tractor. So you got to watch when you lift, you can't lift it up all the way else these would be, would like smash your mag, <laughs> mag guards. <laughs> mag mag guard. guards? <laughs> mug guards up. And then you're know, like, yeah. So that's, that's the only issue I have, but yours. Yeah, no, I is, yours is fine, get on perfectly fine with it in the New Holland. So, right. yeah, fine, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> is our um coon fertilizer spinner i don't know how well you can see it because we're actually in one of the ambient we stores at the minute we put as much away as we can just to keep it in good condition yeah, stop it being getting weathered uh came in the spring not this year last year, year. before yeah. it's like just a basic spec one really uh that's yeah. because no G no like gps or yeah like no whatever. Very we could have had like weighted loading cells on it or something but apparently on the hills that can be a bit inaccurate yeah, just because of the weight moving to the back. To be fair, it's dad that mainly drives it. Yeah. I've done a bit of uh, fertilizer on some, well, after first cut, which I've got on pretty well with, but we're still sort of learning with that one. But generally, yeah, pretty, pretty good machine <laughs> as far as well. we know. Yeah, it does as well. And then we got the well, two Bateman RB25s. This one here is Ben's RB25, and then this one behind us here is Dad's. Obviously, I've, I haven't got a sprayer license because I'm too young at the minute. So this is Apples' department. Yeah, no, um, to be fair, mine is, I would say, a lot of a lot nicer one. Mine's older, mine's an Esther Edge, this one's is 03. Mine, I think, is just works a lot better. I think this one's had a bit of a hard, had a bit of a harder life. For my one, we've only had mine, what's that? Two, Two years, years again, now. probably. They're pretty basic, just four sections on them. All manual, there's no electrics, there's no GPS auto shut off or anything like that. 
I think the next the next step forward for us would be to look into something like auto shut off, considering the m number of times we have to spray the spuds, like we're blight spraying them once a week, and then you have your burn downs, so you're spraying them a lot of times, and you soon rack up a fairly hefty chemical bill. But if we went to sell them, they're not worth a lot, they're worth more to us to just keep, keep and then yeah. have two <laughs> sprayers running, because it's so much easier when you and dad both go out. And there's the fact we have like some fields in one direction, like an hour in one direction, and then you got to go travel <laughs> an hour the other home. way. I really like them. Obviously, I've only this is the first spray I've driven. Um, I think I'd go for another Bateman if we're going. On to hammers. Have you seen one with. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's James just putting a dent in the new shed. First one being the Terex. It's nothing too fancy. No, 2003. It's just a, like, what, didn't they like come on from Matt Bro? So it's yeah, it's Matt Bro it's design, a, but just with white paint. Yeah, we have a Matt Bro down, don't we, down at the cow farm, which you've probably seen. Which it's that, the same as that, like, but just but white <laughs> and a bit just not as old. I don't I prefer the Manitou and the JCB, yeah, which you've probably... Like Nothing special about this one. So, to be fair, it does work all right, it but does, it's just, now that the seat's in low rider position, it's not The seat's so broken, is it, which needs sorted out. Move on to the next one. Keeping this one out of the cold, just because it's... The latest one and it's our favourite one. <laughs> it's the front runner. JCB TM310S. That's a real loveless machine, I would say. So smooth. Yeah, yeah. The only downside I think we think of is like just compared to the others, it's got a pretty big like sort of bonnet. Yeah, it's not so as so you can't like look over your back as as quite as well. But other than that, I don't know. Hopefully you guys can sort of see. Maybe not. Oh, there's a torch. Bit of phone torch. The front moves different to the back, so when you're like loading on a hill, it pivots, it's doesn't it? It's like you like nice and level. So much more stable in the field, isn't it? Like when we're when we're doing silage or something or picking up straw, it's just yeah, definitely a lot smoother. And then on the road, you're like, <laughs> yeah, well, you're forty k, isn't it? Instead of like thirty. Lovely. Another, another handler. <laughs> right, so this is our flat, flat lift. lift. We've had it a while now. We don't use it a hell of a lot. We just do like some. We tram just well, lines. we just do tram lines with it really. Bit. We get on well with it. Had a fair bit of use of this um, when we were planting the spuds this year because it was like pretty baked out all the fields and pretty hard. So we went through with this before I ploughed it. Made it a lot easier. I was struggling to plough some of them, just crawling along. And James would flat lift it and it make it a hell of a lot better. <laughs> it's good, the isn't job. It? Yeah. It does the job. Oil. Breakaway legs on it, which are charged up with the oil, oil pressure. If you hit anything hard, it snaps off and then you just like pump up again and on you go. Here Coming down to the final few things. A brass Roll. ballast roller that we have. To be fair, it does get used. Yeah. And we actually used it this year to roll out some ploughing. It's decent now that we've had the wheels fitted on it. Yeah. Bit of a pig to drive on the road. It's pretty wide on the road, isn't it? Oh yeah, it is a bit awkward. <laughs> a bit of kit that, you've all been waiting to see. <laughs> <laughs> this is the final bit. It's the grass rake. <laughs> yeah, this is six meter. Was it? We just picked this up on an auction, didn't we? I think we like hired it, and then he was like, "Oh, do you want it?" I was like, "Oh, go on then." Tires go flat, so you have to pump them up every time. It's got like a leaking oil pipe. I don't, we don't really use it. Was it you who lost the stand or is it? No, it was someone else that lost the stand. <laughs> it does do a pretty good job, doesn't it? It's like pretty music. simple. So that's going to be it for the farm tour. Uh, that's the second part. I think we've pretty much covered everything now. Yeah, there's probably a few bits we should just kick it around, but you'll see them in later videos to come. I Some reckon. miscellaneous yeah. <laughs> items. But um, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.